Let's say there's a certain router in your VRP group that you expect to be the virtual router master, but it's not. One of the things you have to consider is object tracking as being the reason why it is no longer the virtual router master. And in most cases, this is a really good thing. Why? Because we're using object tracking to monitor the status of an uplink or monitor the status of a connection further on down the line. Like, do we have connectivity to this particular destination device? If we don't, well, let's take an action on that. And the actions in this case are related to priority. We want to decrement our priority to a value that is lower than the backup router within our VRP group. And when we lower our priority to a value that is lower than that backup router, then that backup router can become the virtual router master now and forward traffic successfully. So when we analyze this topology, we can see that DSW2 has a connection up to R2, DSW1 has a connection up to R1, DSW2 is our virtual router master, DSW1 is the backup. And right now, as long as the hello packets keep going back and forth between DSW1 and DSW2 through ASW1 or ASW2, so through our layer two topology, then everything is fine. But the problem is, is if the uplink between DSW2 and R2 fails, what's gonna happen to our traffic? What's gonna happen to our client's connectivity? Well, I want you to consider the fact that that hello packet is still gonna be going back and forth between DSW1 and DSW2 because there's no problem in the layer two topology. The problem is between DSW2 and R2. That is where the problem lies. So we wanna be able to track the health of that particular link or even track the link between R2 and R3 using object tracking. So that's what we have at our disposal here, object tracking that we can utilize to make sure that if those links fail, then we will lower our priority to a value that is lower than the backup router has. And as a result, the backup router now becomes the virtual router master and all the traffic's gonna flow through DSW1 at that point out to the other portions of our network. So if we analyze DSW2 right now, we type in show VRP, we'll see that DSW2 is currently the backup and that's not what we want. We want DSW2 to be the master. And when we analyze this topology, we'll see we're using a virtual IP address of 101167 in this case. Now I changed the virtual IP and here's the reason why. You cannot use object tracking if the virtual IP is the same one that is used on an interface. You can't do it. Your router yells at you and says, object tracking not supported if the router is the owner. So since 10.1.1.66 is owned by DSW2 and we were using it as the virtual IP address, you can't configure object tracking on DSW2. Mm. All right. So if you rely on object tracking in your environment, you're gonna to have to make sure that your virtual IP is an IP that is not used by any of your routers or object tracking won't be configurable. So I made sure preemption was enabled and you can see here that there's a priority of 95, but the configured priority is 105. You see that? Priority is 105 and configured is, or pardon me, priority is 95 and configured is 105. And the reason why is because of this tracking object right here. The tracking object says that it's down. And when it's down, we decrement by 10. So 105 minus 10 equals 95. So I have a really great feeling right now that this particular object, since it's down, is the reason why DSW1 is currently our forwarder instead of DSW2. So we look at DSW1, show VRP, we'll see here. There is the state is the master. There's our virtual IP address, so it's the same. Preemption's enabled, priority's 100. So everything looks all right here. So when we analyze DSW2 further, we use the show track command. We can see from the output of show track that tracking object number one right here matches this object right here. And there's the interface that we're tracking. You give it one slash zero slash 10 and we're tracking the line protocol. So that's the interface going up to R2. 
if this interface is anything but up, up, then we will decrement the priority by how much? We said 10. And the reason why this interface is down is because the shutdown command was used, administratively down. So let's fix that problem. We go to interface, gigabit ethernet, one slash zero slash 10. We type in no shut. And we'll see, as soon as we do that, our tracking object's going to go up. And when the tracking object goes up, there it is right there. The tracking object goes up, then VRP increases the priority from 95 back up to 105. And then since we have preemption enabled and we now have the higher priority, we become the master for the VRP group. Here's something else to consider. What if the decrement value wasn't set high enough? Interface VLAN 20. VRP, the command is going to be VRP 20, track, object 1, decrement, and we're going to say 4. So what does that mean? It means that our priority is 105, we decrement by 4, we're now 101. So what if the interface goes down? Interface, gigabit ethernet, 1 slash 0 slash 10, shut down. When this interface goes down, is our priority going to go low enough? in order to trigger DSW1 to become the act, uh, the virtual router master? The answer to that is no. So even though the tracking object went down, and we look at the output of do show track, we'll see it's down. But if we look at interface, or the output of sh do show VRRP, we'll see that our priority went from 105 down to 101. What's the priority at DSW1? It is what? 100. So that means DSW2 still has the higher priority, so DSW1 is still the backup. So if you're troubleshooting an issue whereby there's a lack of connectivity from the clients beyond their default gateway, and in this case it's DSW2, and this link is down, the problem is, is that the tracking object or the object being tracked is not lowering the priority enough. This value here, the decrement value, is not enough. So we would have to modify that to make it at a, an appropriate value. So we'll take a look at that right now. Decrement it down to 6, which will bring us down to 99. And you'll see relatively quickly here that we went back up, which means that DSW1 is now master. So it's important that you realize how to verify if object tracking is the issue. It could be the decrement value wasn't set low enough, therefore the virtual router master is currently a router that can't reach the other destination networks, or it's quite possible that we have an issue, failure, failover happened successfully, and all traffic's going through the other device, as we want it to, which would be good, that would be okay. But we have to solve the reason why that is happening. And in our case, the link was just administratively down.